Thank you very much. Commissioner Vincent, President White, President Brown, honored guests, and fellow Hall of Famer. Thank you. Because of the rain last night, we are doing some things in reverse. Uh, I was fortunate enough that I received my Hall of Fame ring last night instead of tonight. We went to a dinner that was hosted by these great Hall of Famers and some of the guys who have left. And I think the greatest thing for me, because I am a baseball traditionalist, I believe in the history of the game and the people who have preceded me, not only in baseball, but in the other parts of the country and other sports. And last night for me, I was sitting there and I started looking around the room. And it was like being in a time capsule. I was looking back, I looked around the room and I looked over and I saw Billy Williams. And I remember the sweet swing and the line drives he used to hit over my head in Chicago. I looked over and I saw Willie Stargell. He's also a fellow Oakland and Oaklander. And he's also the reason I wear number eight, or I wore number eight. I looked over and I saw Ted Williams. And I could just vision him, envision him gripping the bat very hard and tight, and then hitting the line drive to the outfield someplace. And I looked over and I saw Charlie Geringer, one of the greatest second basemen of all times. And I could just see him gazelle-like around second base. And for me, the entire history of baseball was in that room last night. And that's what's important, not just that you honor me today and Jim Palmer, but all these great Hall of Famers for what they've done for the game. And I'm just a proud as I can be to be taking a place with them. You know, I was thinking in the last few days of, you know, what I was going to say today. I've got a lot of things written down. But as I approach today, I start to realize that, you know, I was very lucky to be able to play Major League Baseball. When I grew up in Oakland, a lot of great players came out of Oakland. Frank Robinson, Beta Pinson, Willie Stargell. But they had one thing in common. They were about six feet. <laughs> Real physical specimen. So you see, I was very lucky for a guy to be 5'5", five, five, weigh 140 pounds, and for the scouts, Bill White, to see that maybe I had the potential to be a major league player. So that made me very lucky because a lot of little guys didn't get the opportunity to play and show what they could do. And because of that, I stand here today very proud of the fact that I was a second baseman and that I did get a chance to play Major League Baseball. I'm also here, I want to dispel a couple of rumors and add to some of the things that have been said about me. First of all, I want to dispel the rumor that I just learned how to play baseball when I went to Cincinnati. <laughs> That's not true. I learned to play baseball in Houston because when I, my first year in the major leagues, I had teammates, Nellie Fox, Bob Lillis, Eddie Casco, Joe Gaines, Bob Aspermani, Jimmy Wynn, Rusty Staub. I had a lot of great teammates my first year. But I learned so much my first year from Nellie Fox and Bob Lillis that most guys take five years to learn the things I learned that first year. So I knew how to play baseball when I went to Cincinnati. That's the first thing I wanted to spell. The second rumor is, you know, I was lucky because I got to play in Durham. I was one of the original Durham Bulls in reality. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to see Susan Sarandon, but <laughs> in her place, there was Billy Goodman, who was the manager, and Dave Philly. They were my first minor league managers. And I was taught lessons by these guys that held me in good stead all the way through my career. I remember Billy Goodman one day he told me, he said, Joe, you have to approach every season like you're a rookie. He said, if you had a great season, you have to prove that it was not a fluke. If you had a lousy year, you have to prove that it was a fluke. 
So for 20 years, that's the way I approach spring training. And I think that's one of the things that really helped me. Dave Philly told me this about 30 times in the first month of my first minor league season. He said, Joe, he said, there's a pot of gold to be made out there in baseball if you just work hard and give yourself a chance to have fun. I don't even think Dave Philly knew how big that pot of gold really was. It's a real big pot now. But I was also lucky that I played in the Bay Area. And I got a chance to see the great players. Willie McCovey, yes, I was there the day he went four for four against Robin Roberts. And the great Willie Mays. I got to see these guys play each and every day. And the Willie Stargells, and the Frank Robinson, all these great players who came in. And I think that watching them play and the way they enjoyed the game, I was fortunate enough that I was infected with their enthusiasm for the game and wanted to play the game the way that they did. I think the one thing that I remember most about Nellie Fox, other than he was a great player, is that he said to me one day, he said, Joe, the guys who stay in the major leagues the longest are the guys that do the most to help their teams win. And that's the way I tried to play every day. Nellie Fox made sure that I understood that the game was about winning. See, for me, the game has never been about numbers. It's only been about winning. And I only became a winner, I guess, when I did go to Cincinnati. And for that, I want to thank Bob Housem, who is here today. I remember after my second Most Valuable Player Award, Tony Perez came in one day. I was feeling pretty good, and he said, I want you to remember this. He said, when you played for Houston, no one even knew who you were. He said, we brought you here and made you a star. <laughs> and you know what? He was right. And I say thank you to those guys every day, because being a part of the Big Red Machine is also the reason that I'm here today. You know, they had such great players there. And Johnny Bench was here yesterday. He's not here today. He's a fellow Hall of Famer. Great Pete Rose, great Tony Perez, George Foster, Ken Griffey. And I wish I could name them all because they were all part of a commitment that was made by the Cincinnati Reds to win championships. And they all did their part in helping win. Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, and myself, we usually got all the credit. We won the Most Valuable Player Awards, but Tony Perez and the other guys were just as important. That's what makes a great team, a group of guys putting all their skills together and working toward one goal. And that brings me to the other guy, Sparky Anderson. You know, Sparky will never get the credit that he deserved for managing the Cincinnati Reds. Everyone said, all you have to do is put down Bench, Rose, Morgan, Perez, and you could win. That's not true. You know, Sparky Anderson was really the driving force behind the Big Red Machine. And I thank him, even though I know he couldn't be here today. I got a great telegram from him yesterday. And it's been, it was just fantastic that he would take the time and send me the telegram. You know, I, I wish, you know, I could say that this is, you know, the culmination of all my dreams and things like that. but. Truthfully, I never dreamed about making the Hall of Fame. I only dreamed about making it to the major leagues. And when I made it to the major leagues, that was great. You know, the Hall of Fame is really just icing on what has been a very big and filling cake for me. In fact, just making it to the major league was so important. I, re I remember my first at bat like it was yesterday. My first at bat was the bottom of the ninth inning against the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies were fighting for the National League pennant. There was a winning run was on second base, and I got a base hit. And the winning run scored. I'm going to take my place with all these great players. And now that my induction is complete, I feel like I belong here. But no matter how long I'm in the Hall of Fame, I think I'm always going to have problems 
trying to say Mays, Musial, and Morgan in the same breath. <laughs> but I thank everyone for coming, especially all my friends who came from all over the world to be here with me to yesterday and today. But most of all, I want to say to the people who are outside, thank you for coming. And it's been a great day for me, and I know it'll be a great day for Jim Palmer. This is what baseball is all about. We're very lucky. Thank you.